Thank you for participating in this lecture series, which, as has been explained earlier, is part of the continuing education of teachers. We're holding this event in the Palace of the People because of my partiality for the teaching profession. <laughs> After all, I was a teacher. At no ako ay teacher, marami akong naabutan at nakilalang mga napakatalino mga estudyante. At uh, isa dun sa estudyante kong yun ay mas magaling na ekonomisa kaysa sa akin, si Joey Salceda. Kaya, kaya uh, siya ang magpapaliwanag sa inyo ng mga bagay tungkol sa ekonomiya. Kaya ako ay hindi dito, ay hindi, uh, napunta ako rito hindi upang magbigay ng lecture tungkol sa ekonomiya. Gagamitin ko itong pagkakataon. I take advantage of this occasion to address not only you, but through you, all our people on another very important and timely subject. My fellow countrymen and countrywomen, people of the Philippines, being a president is about making tough choices. Sometimes, the path to those choices is very clear, but sometimes it is shrouded in fog. Yet one thing is always true. There is no shirking the responsibility to make those decisions. There is no place to hide if they are not made. Many of the decisions that keep our nation moving forward rest solely on the shoulders of the president and no one else. The challenges that go with being president are with me every second of the day. It's a big responsibility. I sought it out, and I have always been humbled by it. But I am always aware of my obligation to serve the people, abide by the Constitution, and follow my faith as I seek the wisdom and the guidance to do what is right for our nation each and every day. Just a few short weeks ago, on November 23rd, there was a terrible slaughter in Maguindanao. It shocked this nation. The images and details of the carnage also shocked the world. It was a dark day in our nation's history. When arrests started to be made and witnesses started to surface, the ringleaders and their followers took up arms with heavy weapons to thwart justice, bring governance to a halt, and challenge national authority. The nation faced a rebellion that could have ignited total chaos in Maguindanao and likely spread throughout Mindanao. As president, I have a constitutional obligation to defend this nation from internal rebellion just as I do external aggression. So based on careful consultation with advisors on the ground, with our national police, with our military leaders, and with our National Security Council, I took decisive action and declared martial law on December 4th. This action was consistent with our obligation to our nation, no one will ever be allowed to bring rebellion to this country, let alone murder and go free. The objective of our government from the moment martial law was imposed was to maintain it only as long as required and to lift and to work to lift it once crucial objectives had been met. That included arresting the leaders of the rebellion and their accomplices, including the murderers, restoring the rule of law, disarming those who raised arms against our government's prerogative to ensure law and order, ensuring the proper functioning of the provincial government, and protecting terrified witnesses so that justice could truly be served. Since imposing Proclamation 1959, the results have been substantial. They met the objectives set by our government. These include the ability of justice officials and the police 
to mount and carry out a comprehensive investigation into the tragic crimes of November 23rd and the rebellion that followed. The investigation has so far resulted in the arrest or taking into custody of more than 600 individuals, including the alleged masterminds and many of the alleged trigger men. The seizure of over a thousand high-powered weapons and armaments and over 500,000 rounds of ammunition that presented a continuous challenge to the security of our nation. It also included the replacement of key regional government and law enforcement officials to ensuring that justice will be served as investigators continue to pursue all those responsible for the crimes in Maguindanao. Those individuals who have come forward to provide testimony as witnesses to these crimes have been given the protection they require as they prepare to testify in the trials for murder and other illegal acts that will follow the completion of this thorough investigation. Throughout the imposition of martial law, many critics found fault with our actions. They had no faith in our constitution. They had no faith in the men and women, in the military and the police to do their job. In fact, I'm not sure they had faith in democracy itself. Our critics dragged their feet and took their time grandstanding when the situation demanded decisive action. Yet we must act quickly to secure the peace and ensure justice and safety for the people. That is what we did. Unfortunately, if the critics had their way, rebels could have taken over the province and lawlessness could have spread to other parts of Mindanao and murder suspects could have slipped away from justice as witnesses cowered in fear for their safety due to the breakdown of law and order governance in Maguindanao. Inaction could have had dire consequences. We would not let that stand. At the end of the day, we made a tough choice. I made a tough choice. It was based on sound information a clear reading of the Constitution, and a deep desire to quell rebellion and restore order. The results vindicate the choice we made. We make no apologies for acting where others fear to tread. Wanton murder was followed by acts of rebellion. The very moral and legal core of this nation was on the line we would not let it be crossed. My heart, our hearts, go out to the people of Central Mindanao, particularly the friends and families of the victims. To them, we say, your loved ones have not died in vain. Justice shall be served. Peace will come to the province of Maguindanao and our nation will be stronger for the pain. To those who stood with us in the pursuit of justice and upholding the Constitution, I thank you. To those who honestly question my decision, I respect the fact that you cherish the Constitution just as fervently as I do. For those seeking higher office, it's time for action, not just tough talk. If anything positive can come out of the terrible tragedy in Maguindanao, it is that the heartbeat of peace is very much alive. This is clear by the very passion by which people across the nation condemn the violence and by the positive developments we are once again seeing in our efforts to restart peace talks in Mindanao. Only lasting peace will bring
true justice to Mindanao and ensure that these crimes cannot be repeated. Thank you. Sa inyong lahat, dear teachers, thank you for allowing me to take this opportunity to speak to the nation through you. I hope you will find the rest of your day in Malacanang meaningful. Have a blessed Christmas, and may we all have, for our country, a prosperous new year. Maraming salamat sa inyong lahat.